So I said I'm going to be trying out these Neo Color 2s. These are the curated sets. So you get 10 in each set and there's two that go together. These are the cover slips. And you get a cool set, which I would say are more my kind of colours. And a warm set which are really nice. I've had these in my basket about 10 times over the years. I could never decide which one to get. So I just got both, hit the bullet, got both of them. I thought this set will be more practical, but I like the colors more in this set. But thankfully they go together. They come in these little red tins, which are really cute. I love a pop of red when it comes to stationery. And they're nice and compact, they're quite heavy but you could put this in your pencil case and what these are, Neo Color 2's, I'm sure you already know but if you don't, they look a bit like a Crayola crayon like so and it's a stick of wax that you can draw with but then if you add water to it, it dissolves and becomes like a paint and yeah, they're very, very popular with illustrators because of the versatility. You can water them down and paint with them. They come in a ton of really nice colours. Karen Dash are really great at picking colours for their materials. And they also go over the top of stuff really well. So if you like mixed media artwork and you want something to add final little details on top, this would be a great option for you. So this is the cool set. This is the colour selection. I'll swatch them out in, in a bit, but those are the colours. Lots of turquoises, some deeper colours. And then this is the warm set. We get some sandy tones, some pinks, and some more interesting colours. But yeah, I'm really excited to try these out. I don't know if I've mentioned before, but this isn't my first time trying Neo Colors. I did have a few back in the day, a mix of ones and twos, and I could never get into them. They, I don't know. I think I think because I had colors that didn't work together. I like the consistency of them. <clears throat> I liked using them, but I just couldn't figure out how to use them in my work, and I think it's because I had kind of awkward colours and half of them were Neo Color ones as well which I didn't mean to do, I didn't really know the difference back then and I bought half of them in the wrong series if you don't know, the ones don't dissolve with water, the twos do so make sure you're getting the right one, they look pretty much exactly the same there's only a little bit of difference on the packaging so be careful if you're interested in these but yeah, my girl is to try them out, have some fun, and then maybe pick my favourite ones, mix them up, put them in a tin, and I can keep this in my pencil case. I'm going to be going away in a couple of weeks uh, to Scotland, and I plan on filming some of it, um, taking some art supplies, doing some drawing, and really get to know them. But yeah, I'm going to uh, swatch them out, and we'll have a little play with them now. Okay, so let's give these a closer look. So this is how they come, with a little cover slip. You just slide off. And these are actually curated by this artist. I don't pronounce the name, because I'll butcher it. And I don't want to cut these, but inside there's some information about the artist and different techniques you can try with the pastels. And here we have the little tins. You can fit 10 Neo colours in each tin and when you open them up you get a little Looks like a glassine sheet with some information on. Oop, it was the wrong way up. 
Uh, it just tells you a little bit about Karen Dash, the company. So here's our full colour selection for the cure I did set. I'll zoom you in a little bit. And I really like these, especially these colours here. I think are really nice. I do like a turquoise and a teal. So I think my first thing to do would be to swatch them out and see what they actually look like. So I'm going to bring my sketchbook over. Let's see what you guys are. We'll find a nice clean spread. And yeah, I'm just going to start swatching them out. I'll tell you the colours as I go. That might be the easiest. So then if you just want to buy one colour, you can. So the first colour is pink. I'm just going to do them over here. I'll zoom you in a bit when I... Uh, When I'm finished, I'll show you them all together. Next colour is Salmon. Just a little bit more peachy. This is Apricot. This is orangish yellow. This is Sahara yellow, just nice creamy kind of colour. So they go down really smooth. This is golden ochre. Um, I am getting a few little uh, crumbs coming off the paper. It's one of my main concerns about these is I don't know if they're gonna smush when you close the book. I can't stand anything like that, but I do have fixative because I use soft pastels in my sketchbook, so I have to fix them anyway. So this is flame red. I'm gonna wet these in a bit. So we can turn them into paint and see what they look like then. This is... what are you? Chinese green. So I'm guessing it's gonna be like a... Chartreuse, maybe? This is English Red. I think this is one of the colours I used to have and I really liked it. So that's nice. It's like a earthy red kind of colour. And the last colour in the set is Umber. She looks quite grey. I would expect it to be a little bit more brown. Now moving on to the cool set. First colour is light cobalt blue hue. I'm just going to carry them over. So you have like a little family of spots. Oh, this is quite nice. I like that one. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, I like this one to all the blues. This is turquoise blue. I think this is another one that I did um, back when I bought a bunch of random colors. So sometimes with 
colored pencils and things. Some colors are a bit more chalky than others, but these, these all feel the same when I'm drawing with them, which is quite nice. This is light blue. Ooh, I like this one as well. <laughs> this one is turquoise green. So we've got turquoise blue and turquoise green, which they're quite similar, but they're different enough. We have a green called jade green. My dots are becoming too formulaic. I'm gonna do a big one <laughs> just to spice it up a little bit. I've got macalite green, like the mineral, I think. I think that's what it says. <laughs> Alright, this one's, this one's nice too. And we have dark green. I was going to say, I can't read it, it's so dark, because it's dark green. <laughs> I love these colours, oh they're so nice. They're quite bright, but I like that. This is a very me kind of colour, Prussian blue. So this is vermilion which is like an orangey colour. Yes, nice bright, slaps you in the teeth orange. Similar to this orange from the other set. And our last colour is salmon pink. Which is funny because this was pink and this was salmon and now we have salmon pink. I don't flick the crumbs off. Yeah, that's smudged a little bit. Okay. This is our full colour range when they are dry. So I'm going to wet them now. I've got some water, so I'm going to activate them now, see what they look like. See if I can zoom you guys in. Still get used to this camera. <laughs> I'm just going to wet my brush. And while I'm doing this, I'll tell you a little bit more about these. So these two sets are, as far as I'm aware, they say that they are a limited edition. But they're still for sale on Amazon. And I think they came out about a year ago. I remember them coming out and I remember thinking, oh, I really want those. Like I say, I never bought them until now. And but they are still available, at least in the UK. And I think the EU, because I think that they came from Amazon EU. So if you if you are interested, I would pick them up. But all of these colours you can buy individually anyway. So you don't have to buy the full sets, you could just get the colours on an art website or in an art shop. I don't really live near any actual big art shops. So stuff like this is quite hard for me to get, I have to get it online. The only place I know that sells them is in London which is pretty far away for me. <laughs> I only go to London maybe once every couple of years now. I haven't been since the pandemic. But I think I'm going in a couple of months, so if I decide I really like these, I can get a couple more colors then. I try not to order art stuff online unless I really have to. But like I say, when you live, where I live, there's not a ton of choice for shops. 
you have to travel if you want to get art stuff. Or just deal with what you have. So some more things about these. I was under the impression that they were all light fast and I don't think that they are. I don't know where I'd heard that. But I used to think, oh yeah, um, what are they called? <laughs> Neo colours, yeah, they're all light fast. That's one of the benefits of the range. They're not. They do have writings. I don't know if it's on the crayon or not. Um, no, I don't think it's actually on each crayon. I think you would have to look it up. But I did notice it says that some of them weren't light fast when I was looking online. Which I'm not too bothered about, because I bought them mostly for playing about with in my sketchbook. So any artwork I would use them for would be for digital scans, most likely. But it does suck. I would like to think I bought these, thinking they were um, light fast and they're not. Maybe I'm mixing them up with the Neo Pastels by Karen Dash, which are their oil pastels. Maybe they're all light fast, and that's where the confusion came from. So yeah, I, I like these so far. They, uh, they reactivate really well. Another reason I think I might like them more now, and I didn't back then, is now I use a lot more uh, watercolour pencils and things that you know, reactivate with water, which is what these are, basically. But they're, they're nice and vibrant, they're completely dissolving from what I can tell. You never can quite tell until it completely dries, but yeah, they completely dissolve. Nice and easy, they're not losing very much vibrancy. doing exactly what you would want them to do, which is great. There's nothing worse than unruly art supplies. <laughs> I like this minty jade colour. It's kind of like a lunar moth sort of colour. That's what I'm thinking of when I'm looking at it. This one's exciting. Colour of my nails. It's one of my favourite colours, this like deep turquoise colour. There's an ink by Liquitex that's very similar to this and I love that. This is dark green, this is another nice colour. So the only thing with this set is these are all very bright, punchy colours. Oh, like I say, if... <laughs> oh, yes. I like this one. I'm going to make this one really big because I like it. <laughs> I love this kind of colour. I love indigos and Prussian blues and kind of night sky colours. They're my favourites. This one I'm excited about. Vermilion, in my experience, it's one of those colours you either love or you hate. And I used to hate it. I used to think, God, what a ghastly colour. But now I love it. <laughs> I love the way these three look. The green, the blue, and the vermilion. I love that. And our last little pink. I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger as well. This looks quite nice with that blue as well. Nice. 
So those are colours all activated. I'll bring them up to you. I don't put it too close to the camera because it struggles with things in its face. So I'm gonna let these dry and then I'm gonna come back and we'll do a little demo with them. I'll go off and have a think of what I'm gonna draw. I feel like painting something quite fun. Yeah, I'm gonna let these dry and I'm gonna go off and have a little think. Hey, so our little swatches are dry now and I'm going to try them out, do some little drawing. Hey guys, welcome back. I uh, thought I would show you what I've done so far. So here's my sketchbook. <laughs> this cute little pansy lion. I'm trying to get back into doing some more creature design and character design. That used to be something I did a lot and I've kind of strayed away from in the last few years, but it's really fun. But yeah, this is how he turned out and I think he's really cute. The process I used was how I would paint with watercolour pencils. So the same kind of process. And it worked alright. It did chew the paper up a little bit, but I think that's more a paper problem than a, than a neo-colour problem. I also used a I also used a tiny bit of coloured pencil on top just to see how it would handle and to add some little lines and marks like his whiskers and to get this dark line in his ear. I couldn't really get in with the Neo colour, he's quite small. He's smaller than my hand so I had to use something thinner to get in and tidy things up and it, it took up pretty well. The Neo colour isn't on here particularly thick because you can keep layering these. I think you just have to kind of embrace the scribbliness of these a bit. And yeah, but I am finding I like to put marks down. I like to kind of put a wash down of color and then put marks down and then come back in with my paintbrush and sort of soften the marks a little bit as I'm going around. And it gives you this kind of fun painted look. Like these pansies, I literally drew the outline with pencil, scribbled the colour on, as you can see. It took like five seconds and then wet it with the brush and just sort of let it do its thing. And they are very loose, but I think it's it looks nice. I think this is kind of the intended way to use these. I don't want to use these for masterful, detailed artwork. I've got watercolour and watercolour pencils to do that. So for these, I just want them for fun, um, for in my sketchbook quick studies like this. I think they'll be great. So what I've done is I've loosely sketched out two more of these little pansy lions with a, a coloured pencil, just quick. And I think I'm going to colour these in with the Neo colours as well and try some different colours. Yeah, I'm going to crack on with these two. I'll show you a little bit of my process and then I'll meet you back at the end.
Hey guys, welcome back. And I just want to do my little end cap for the video. I finished my doodles and towards the end I was just kind of embracing the scribbliness of these and just really getting in there and getting loose. And I, I like them a lot. I think they're going to be fun for quick concepts and playing around. I like that they're super bright and it's it's got that kind of children's drawing texture to it which i find really fun i just finished the page off and added some fun captions and yeah i i like them a lot i also tried a couple of things like i said before i tried a bit of pencil on this guy who's a little bit tighter than these two but i also tried a paint pen just to see if it would go on top of the wax and it does seem to work it might wear off over time um, and I also tried an eraser they don't erase but it does smudge them in quite a nice way it kind of blends them out you can just use water so I don't know why you would use a, ru a rubber but it's, it's good to know another thing I tried is sharpening the crayons. This is something I wanted to do the first time I bought them and I couldn't but I think you need a specific sharpener. I have this little brass sharpener and I bought this for my Albert Dura watercolour pencils because it's got the bigger hole. So this is the normal size for a colour for a well for a pencil but if you have a sharpener with the larger hole you can sharpen these and I really like that actually I did these little thin blue lines on this character with the sharpened pencil and it, it worked amazingly it's very nice to find little lines with the only problem is that you end up with a lot of shavings that you've lost so what I'm going to do is keep these and use them in an upcoming project, even if it's just to stain a piece of paper. As it does feel a bit wasteful. But you can do that, and it works great. But yeah, I do like them. The thing is with these two sets, is the colours are very bright, and you kind of have to embrace that. I felt a bit awkward drawing these, because I was thinking, my god, these colours. They're so intense. I normally would maybe only use one bright colour, in my work as a popping colour, but these are like all popping colours. It was really fun to get outside my comfort zone and paint a bright pink lion <laughs> with a flower on its head. But yeah, um, I hope you found this video helpful or interesting and it definitely got me out of my comfort zone. But yeah, thank you all for watching guys for this week's video. Hope you found this little review and demo useful. I certainly did, and I'm glad that I like them. I, I was a bit doubtful. I thought, oh god, I didn't like them before, probably won't like them again. But I do, and I think they're going to be fun for adding pops of colour to my mixed media work and working in my sketchbook. They certainly encourage me to loosen up a little bit and work a bit faster, which is something I want at the moment. I don't want to lose my tight illustration work, but at the same time, I also want to be practicing more and just getting ideas down and not worrying about them being perfect so I think these are going to be great for that anyway guys thank you for watching and um, I'll see you guys later